country continues to mourn the death of the 41st president of the United States, George H.W. Bush. 22 News reporter Shani Whitlow is live in Kennebunkport, Maine, where people are remembering an American hero who had they had the pleasure to call neighbor and friend. We are live this morning in Kennebunk, Maine. We are less than a mile away from the Bush compound. This is a place where the Bush family spent quite a bit of time, half of the year here in Maine, the other half in Texas. I'm also standing here with political consultant Tony Signoli, who's also a Kennebunk resident as well. Can you talk about how this area, their compound, became known as the White House, away from the White House. Well, the Bushes always loved Maine. They were coming up here for the longest time. They bought this piece of property on what's called Walker's Point, and it's just such an iconic spot. Any national news, any his presidential historian has used photographs or video on that compound of the Bushes in their living room, and it's a great big octagon living room there. It was perfect for Bush to meet with national and international leaders, and that's what they would do. It's just, instead of Camp David, come on to our home, come up to Maine, and you'd see them all over this community. Everything behind us and around us, these are places where they would stop in for coffee, bring a guest, even an international guest, even other foreign leaders. Speaking of that, can you talk about how this small coastal community will remember the former president and former first lady? I think we're seeing it now. I've been here for the last few days in Kennebunkport, back and forth, and you're seeing, I mean, it was immediate. All flags went to half-mast. You saw people getting together and talking in the coffee shops here. Where you'll see photographs of the bushes on the walls because this is where they would come, have coffee, stop in the general store. People just talking, just getting a feel for you know, wow, this change. And this is the same thing right after uh, Mrs. Bush passed as well. But I think overall, you won't see a lot of change because the entire family has homes on this compound. It's become like the Kennedy compound, the Bush compound. It's not just the one iconic home anymore. It's several houses. And President Bush, 43, also comes in and out of Kenny Bunkport as well as Governor Bush and others. Now, since you spoke of that, do you see this still continuing on this legacy of continuing to come here every year? Because Bush Sr. Yeah. had been coming here since he was a child with oh, gotcha. his own parents. Absolutely. There's a familial thing here. They've had holidays here, Thanksgivings, etc. And I think this will become even more so now for President Bush 43 and his brothers and sisters and the grandchildren. This will be the gathering place. This is that one spot that they will all come, whether they're in California or Texas or wherever else, Florida. This is that place that they associate even more so as home for all those years. This is where Barbara and George Bush spent most of their great time, fun time, and this is where they really associated themselves as having family. Now, speaking of fond memories, we're actually standing directly across the street from a heart outlined mm -hmm in lights with the number 41 directly in the middle for everyone who drives through the center of town to actually see as they pass and go into this inn across the street from us. I want you to talk about some fond memories that you have of President 41. Well, I'll tell you, there's a, uh, his, the family church is open to the public. There's a great big outside seating area. And I was there one day just showing it to a few people. And all of a sudden, this speedboat comes flying by in the ocean. And it's the president, and he's a former president at this point. He's maybe in his late 80s, and he's driving this thing. And it's a huge speedboat. Secret Service are on it. Other Secret Service are trying to keep up in other boats. And from behind us, we hear, can you believe it? He's like a kid. I turned around. It was Barbara Bush. We didn't even realize that she was there. And she then went to the railing and started yelling out to the boat, slow down. I mean, that's how regular they were. And it's the kind of thing that you'd see around here if you were just in and out all the time. They were such an ingrained part of this community. Can you just also, you, since you started, sure. you continued with that, can you continue to talk about just his, uh, his love for life yeah. and how he never lost that? I mean, his 80th and 90th birthday, yeah. jumping out of a plane to celebrate it. Yeah. Can you talk about that? This is a fellow that burned the candle at both ends, and maybe it's because his, his background. He began life in a very privileged sense and yet became the youngest fighter pilot in World War II. Probably somebody that could have gotten out of it, but went. There's always, always that sense of obligation that sense of public service. And you saw it with him, the very last photograph taken of him. You know, there he is with his former Secretary of State, Jim Baker, his dear personal friend, and his service dog, and they've gone to vote. They're like the last shot of public service. And here, throughout Kenny Bunkport, one of the last things they did just before Mrs. Bush died was make a large contribution to the local hospital. You saw that kind of philanthropy, you saw that kind of public service for them over and over again. Well, thank you so much, Tony. 